Hello, everyone. I'm so glad I made it here again each and every week. Coming like a, <laughs> a redundancy. I'm here every time. You click back and I turn right back on and Lenny Fontana makes it back once again. Thankfully, it's been a rough week. Just to bring you all up to speed, I got word that Miss Kathy Brown is doing pretty good. Can't say 100%. But she walked out of that hospital and went home and she's getting it together. And and the next fella that I'm bringing on, his real name in Dutch is Yahoon, which I'm glad he told me. It's a very, very authentic Dutch name, Yahoon. And it's super cool. Also, the weather's been holding up pretty good in New York, thankfully. But I'm so like, once again, so, so happy that we've been pushing TikTok and everybody's watching the shows again on TikTok and we're getting so many followers. Please keep sharing the shows. It's working. Um, YouTube Live, as you all know, we've been taking on YouTube Live. That's been going very well. Facebook is showing me no love. Those copyright issues and the sharing just seems, I know we have to do something with Spotify with it, but. Thanks again for all of you for following us on Spotify with the True House Story Show. And we're building a wonderful fan base. And as you all know, in my shows, we try to get things historically right. So we may go to a classic artist, which would be legacy, someone that's now and someone that is happening up and coming and now and our future. So... Welcome to True House Stories. I'm Lenny Fontana coming out of New York City. This week, we take it over the pond where there's lots of canals in a place that started a lot of things. Music is one of them because they came over very early to America as settlers. And they're, this is the Dutch settlers. And the Dutch have been doing a lot of things in dance music. Some of the best record producers of today and some of the labels are actually coming out of the Amsterdam area. One being Spinning, another being Armada. Those that know that I'm friends with Armin Van Buren as well. And and the legendary Ben Liebrand, who has had a radio show for decades as part of our class of alumni that had been on the show with us and told his story right here on True House Stories. But today we're going to a younger cat, younger guy which is so, so cool. Real young guy. And let me put you like this. Even the name. I'm going to say his name. De Hoffner. Love the name. De Hoffner. Why? Because he helped cultivate, or should I say helped create, as one of the original settlers in this house music same game, a genre called Tropical House. Okay? And has taken it to another level. To a point where worldwide, in excess of over 600 million streams, his music, over 600 million, we could be somewhere close to a billion probably by now, which we don't know the numbers. I asked him, we really don't really know, but it could be anywhere between 800 million or 900 million. But that's a lot of streaming on his music. And I have to congratulate him on that because there's not many people that could say that, that have that kind of impact and that kind of reach. He is our future. He plays festivals. He plays all the clubs in Europe. I asked if he came to America to do anything yet. He said, no, I guess that's on his bucket list. And I would presume that that will happen soon before you know it. But for with everything I could say is this. We must keep pushing our young guys because they are setting the ways and standards to where we're all going and heading. So... I'd like to introduce you all to the man himself, Da Hafna on True House Stories. Welcome, my man. How are you? What an invite. Thank you. I'm I'm doing very good. Very good. And you? Tired and stressed and excited. <laughs> I got you here. We had some crazy stuff today, but I made it here. I wasn't sure if I was going to make the show, but we made the show happen. The, the machine is on. And 
I wanted to say, everyone, send some positive thoughts to De Hoffner. His dad had surgery, which, thank God, he told me everything went great. But we want a speedy recovery for his back. So exactly. let's make sure. Because he was almost not going to make the show today if something was not right. He may have called me and said, no show today. But thank you, De Hoffner. Even though I know you, it's important, your dad, I'm so glad you're here with us. And thank you again. So De Hoffner, let's get right into it. I because cool. I know you have a lot to tell us. When you were a young kid, okay, young, you know, grammar yeah. school. Yeah. How does music find you, the young guy? Um, it was like I I think like a normal Dutch kid. Um, both of my parents weren't that into music, but the radio was always on, and when we went to on holiday. Uh, to Spain or to, to France, there was always this like CDs playing in, in the car with mostly uh, Dutch pop music. And uh, I think like a while later in my life, I was introduced to uh, house music or e electronic music because like my, my dad and mom didn't listen to it. I think they're, they, they only knew like Ken Kraft. You said Gangcraft or Kraft? Oh, no, 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 uh, the, the, the German, uh, how do we do that? Kraftwerk? Uh, Kraftwerk, that's the oh, one. I said yeah, Gangcraft, yeah, 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 Okay, yeah. I want to make sure I was close. I was yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you, so you had Kraftwerk playing on in, in the house? Ah uh, no no not not that much but come on like, man it, they, they 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 um my my dad found it like interesting and it, when we were talking about electronic music it was only that band you know but okay so you, your parents of course grew up at a time where soul music and the UK and Lex what was that other radio station um Luxembourg radio was popular a lot of people talk about that in Europe that they were listening to that typical radio station because it was bringing something different like soul music where was that anything i'm not, I, no, I'm not sure they were like into soul music it was what a kind of music were your like, parents playing like, like just like the top 40 music like the the, the beatles uh the rolling stones uh, like the, the, the typical um what was on the radio music. basically exactly right? exactly they weren't like music lovers Okay, so, the, so my my mom told always told to me when I was a kid like maybe you can play the, the keys is fun and I was like nah I want to play football and uh, stay behind my computer and now I regret it. <laughs> you regret not learning how to play piano, keys exactly. Why? Yeah. Why you still doing what you're doing? But what happened? Um, uh, like I I can play the keys while I'm producing. Like it's. it's but I don't like can read uh, sheet music or um, play something by ear. And I'm always like very jealous when people just yeah can sit behind the piano and just play the keys whatever they want like improvise and stuff. It's just so inspiring. And I, I went to a lot of like piano classical music uh, concerts too. I really like the, the the piano as an instrument too. Ah, so you have you like classical music. Like the modern classic, like Ludovico and Audi and stuff, the more like light stuff. Okay. So take us on the journey. You So really, football is really the number one thing for you at that time. You're playing football and games, Game Boy yeah. and all that, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's uh, also why I was introduced with music, uh, because I was kind of like a computer nerd. So I always like downloaded this new software that was online or get a copy on my, on my school and then i had this like little cd with magic's music maker i think ah okay and it was called ej the the the, the software and i was just fucking around with the with the program and was making music when i was like 13 maybe 12 13 14. was youtube started yet at that point I think it was Google Video here over here in Well, that's Ohio. the question. That was that's where I'm alluding to my question. Okay, cool. So here's what back when we all started, there was nothing like that. We had no internet. 
I know. No watching somebody explain to you logic. Did you have anybody help you show you on the television or? I'm not sure. I only uh, can remember that like my neighbor uh, was maybe two, three years older than me. And he was he was a DJ and I was always like very interested in what he did. And um, but he was just a DJ at schools and home parties and that kind of stuff. But I can remember I went uh, to him and I asked like, what what are you doing behind the decks that were in decks? It was just like a CD player, like two, and he was mixing. And I was like, but um, I always thought that you were creating the music behind the the decks. And he was like, no, it's it's made by a producer. And then I went searching on the internet how to produce the sound. Okay, so, so here's the question. So when he said to you, it's made by a producer, did you say to yourself, what is a producer? Oh, of course. Okay, guys, because people think, you know, we magically knew all these things. Is exactly. No, no, just it's more like, but... Um, what do you mean producer? What, what, what is the difference between, a, a, like, when it's like Beyonce or Chiesa? What, what's... And then he told me, like, ah. yeah, but Beyonce, Beyonce sings on it and she has a producer to produce the music. And then he's like, but Chiesa... Oh, so like creates the music that he plays. So it was a little bit confusing at the moment, but um, yeah, that's when I really started to uh, yeah search on the internet about what what does a producer do? How do you make the music on the on the computer and stuff? And then I found this little CD like the EJ Mag Magic's Music Maker. And then begins right. So, yeah, what, your, was so what was your what was your original first setup? Ah, wow. It was just like a very old PC, Windows, maybe 97, 2000. I, I, don't, I don't even know. Um, I think it was the, the, the 2000 when I started producing. So, so it would be Windows 98 or Windows 2000. 98, exactly. yes, exactly. Um, and it was all just for fun, just playing around. The same, I always like downloaded like Photoshop and... Um, like playing with the paint, I think I, it was like uh, word paint. Um, just um, to try different stuff on a computer, it's not especially to uh, uh, work on music, but work with a computer to do stuff and to create stuff. Okay, Yahoon, here's the question when you were in basically just starting to test out your skills. What were you thinking about as far as your school level stuff? In other words, for career, what were you thinking that you were going to be doing for a career? Was it music or were you thinking like you're going to become a lawyer or a doctor or something? Um, uh, I don't think I was busy with that at that moment, but I did uh, go to school for uh, to work in a laboratory. So it's very different. <laughs> what kind of laboratory are we talking about? Like the CSI stuff. Oh, like right. forensic, to, to forensic. Steal your, like yeah, you, forensic stuff. You to see steal your DNA to to get you to, from. Oh uh, yeah. wow! So, and I always find it like interesting, and uh, it was kind of cool. But in the end, it was not for me, and too too technical. And um, I'm, I'm I was always like very interested in biology and stuff like that, but. To do like every day, it's it's a very hard job. What qualifications do you need to become in school? Like, what's part of the prerequisite to become a forensic expert like you would have been? How much schooling was involved for you to go through all that to get it done? I I had to school like every day, but I didn't go every day ah! i went to festivals and stuff so that's one of the the reasons i'm not a forensic uh but how many yeah, years exactly. how many years you would have had to do that to get the to get all the uh, certificate it, it, it depends how far you want to go you can like um i think it could be done in four years maybe oh it's maybe a long five time years. Yep. Yeah, it's a long time. And afterwards, you can go more uh, like sure. specific on one. So it Special. depends. It depends. But it was, See, I, it was planned to be four years. So mom and dad have this idea in their head that their baby boy is going to become a forensics expert. Exactly. And 
Now, what happens is it, there's a left turn that clicks and happens. <laughs> Mom and dad, sit down. Yeah, and they weren't very happy in the beginning. Let's have that but... conversation. Let's have that conversation. Let me ask the question again. How did you go to them to say, we are, no, we are not going any further with school? We are stopping the school to do this music. Um, after the, the, the CSI study, <laughs> I did another study and it was uh, in like, media and design. Okay, good. So I was always interested in the computer and stuff. So that was more logical to do. Um, but in the end, school just wasn't for me. <laughs> so when I told my parents, um, I want to do music, they were relieved that I found something that worked for me. In the beginning, they find it like very hard to believe that you can make music out of it. But after I think maybe a half year, I already showed them I was earning the same money as I would do when I finished the study. So Okay. So you, you, again, you start doing your, your, your production work. You start working on the computer. How long does it take you before you get the first project ready to bring around to a record label? Um, that's actually kind of funny because um, I wasn't producing music to to release it on on uh, record labels or stuff. I just put it out on SoundCloud, and then the okay. record labels were um, messaging me to release it. So I take to take it one step uh, back. Um, when I was like 14, 15, I was just making this very typical EDM-ish kind of house. Like I was a fan of like Hartwell and Layback Luke, Fato Gonzalez, uh, the Dutch guys. And I re can remember that uh, Martin Garrix was releasing Epic. And I was like, nah. I, it's not my my style of music and right. all all the DJs were going that direction and I was like nah let's just quit making music it was all for fun and it's yeah it's 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 not that I want to be like this big DJ or stuff I never hit um any uh decks to play live so I was like that nah, just just delete like uh Fruity Loops I was producing in Fruity Loops at that moment like let's delete it and we will see what happens next in my life. And then um, when I was uh, used to go to like school, I went to a lot of festivals and there I saw Baker Matt playing at a big festival. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, this is the music I like. Okay. And I don't think it's that hard to produce. So I reinstalled Fruity Loops on my laptop. Okay. And then I made this record. It's called Sonnestraal. And I showed it, to, showed it to my friends. And my friends were like, this is good music. The rest you made was just garbage. <laughs> and I put it on SoundCloud. And in like a few weeks, months, it went viral, viral, and viral. And then Crosswalk, uh, French label, hit me up on SoundCloud to release it officially. Did everything go well with that contract and everything? <laughs> um, I don't want to talk trash uh, on, the, on the show, but... Uh, no, here's what I want you to do. It's not talking trash. I just want you no, to be honest. It, it, it's just like when we're talking about... Um, it's all about Tropic House today, right? Like how it um, came to life. And Crosswalk is one of the, the labels why Tropical House is here. So that's why I don't want to talk trash about them. But um, a lot of guys, uh, the same as me, uh, we signed the, the contract and had a little troubles later on in our career, to put it like this. Because we, I, we didn't know about like options and stuff. Oh. So and did, there they, was did like, they mention to you about getting a, a lawyer to look at it? And that, or you just signed it? I, like... I was just like happy to sign it because... How old I was, never, this, was I how think old, I was 20. Okay, so 19, you were under age. Okay, so you were adult already. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
and it wasn't meant to be this the beginning of a, a DJ career. It was just meant to be like, yeah, let's put it out. I was happy that I can show my music to the rest of the world and maybe earn some money with it. But and then, really just get records out. You weren't thinking exactly, about exactly. Yeah, exactly. You were but it wasn't that bad. like the contract wasn't that bad. Like um when we're talking about like percentages and stuff, but there was just this little sentence that I had like to do 12 tracks with them in the future. Yeah, there was kind of a lot. <laughs> so wait, so basically you signed a 13 track deal, like an almost yeah, like an album. album deal. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. How did you get out of it? Um, or how did you finish it? I should say. In the meantime, uh, like after like a few months, I was getting uh, uh, signed with Spinning, but they didn't knew about the contract. And later on, I was signed with Amada, and they didn't knew about the contract. So like four or five years later, they called my manager. Like, yeah. Um, he has to do like 12 more tracks with us because he didn't send all these demos to us. And it was something like uh, the Dutch law was a little bit different than the French law in uh, like options here in Holland. It's like when you send it and they right. don't accept it, you already sent the, the option. Sure. And in France, it was like we you can you have to send the, 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 the demo, like the option, but when we don't want it, we want the next one. That's what they're talk, uh, saying to us. So there was like lawyers and stuff. And we're, I think I did like six tracks more with them. And we're all fine with, with each other because they did a really good job uh, making my music big and making the Tropical House music big. At that point, were you starting to think about going out as a, a, a touring DJ? Or was that something that was still far away? To become, you know, the the main headliner DJ at these like festivals and stuff. And it, w it went quite fast after that release because uh, it was uh, this big tropical house hype. So I think a few months after uh, my first record, Sonnestrau went on SoundCloud and went official. I was already uh, doing gigs in Belgium and France as a headliner. It wasn't that like the big festivals was, a, but I was like the headliner on the house show. Okay, so this is now officially called Tropical House, but pre to that was called Melodic House, correct? Um, I, I think because I think everything with like a new genre is hard to to say what it is. Um, I can remember that I called it, and more guys from the scene called it like Melodic Deep House or stuff something, but. Nowadays, like melodic deep house is something, something else. Yeah. So uh, it, I think we call it like that because um, it was deep house ish with melodic elements, like more like melodic instruments, like the saxophone and the the, the violins and stuff like that. So I think that's why we called it that way. Um, and it's it's kind of funny because. I was producing more like the piano house with saxophone vibe. And then you had this other way with Kaigo. Right. And they both were named Tropical House. But the tempo was uh, different and some elements were different. But I think, I guess, like the vibe was kind of the same. Mm -hmm. So it went on all, one big thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. All, it was all called the tropical house, but sometimes it wasn't that tropical at all. It was just like happy and light house music, right? But see, I, I, I've I've been under the conclusion that you are one of the innovators of that genre, if not an important piece to the genre of tropical house. Yeah, because. There wasn't many people doing it at that time, right? No, that was that's was, and is one of the reasons why I'm doing this at my age still, because I was one of the 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 first, I think, that 
produced it and no one could know that the genre was getting that big um the i think a lot of uh house music starts uh and new house music starts in holland and like norway france norway. and it was it was the same with this genre um yeah we're making uh we're making uh, the people were making uh, tropical house music in france norway sweden the netherlands denmark i think yeah and it's kind of funny because it's very cold out <laughs> out here it's like not nothing tropical it's like the, uh, my it's first shows where we're, we're in belgium belgium and france it's like not that tropical right it's damp it's wet it's cold there's no sun it's great it's so strange so, it's so strange why do we do tropical house music in in that area i i think it was like this this um in, in my opinion why i started like the tropical house thing is because it was like a counter genre to the big room edm animal style uh martin garrix you know what i mean alessio What's... all that all those guys yeah and we were done with it and i was like let's chill a little bit and make house music that's also possible to listen when you're at home or when you study or and th that was actually funny about the, the the genre it was very strange because here in holland it wasn't that big like the first year right because people here in holland only uh were listening it when they had to study or when they had friends over on the really? background yeah and in france i was doing this headline shows and people were raving on tropical house music so it was very strange for me that there's this disconnect between what the purpose of tropical house was for yeah because that is strange it's you strange know, you, right because you, it's yeah you're thinking about you're coming there with the idea you're going to be doing electro edm and you got people going mad for your sound. That's crazy. Huh? You never know what's going to hit. No. The, 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 the crowd decides what's why they want to listen to it and how they dance to it, how to listen to it and where. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was in the beginning uh, uh, kind of funny. And also when I went bigger as a DJ and I have still this problem. Um, when I had shows in Holland, I had to play different kind of music right. than when I played in the rest of Europe or the world. Because the first, I think, two years I was touring Europe, maybe one or two, three shows a year in Holland. And afterwards, I was doing the shows in Holland. But also in like Brazil, it went very big, the, the tropical house genre, and in Asia oh, yeah. and in Africa. Yeah. Very big. But but the 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 I think the, the Dutch... People never went that crazy on the tropical house music uh, on like the festivals or clubs. But you're still getting booked to do it, right? In in Holland to play those sets? Uh, or no. Yeah, but I play like the um, the like my biggest hits. That why I was booked, and then I always. Had a build up to more. It was called Deep House at that moment, but yep. I thought uh, Deep House nowadays is a little bit different. Um, it was uh, more the underground uh, side. I don't know if you know the names. Kulsch. It was like German German uh, music, mm -hmm. um, and it has this, has the same groove, a little bit more higher in the BPM. But still, like with a little bit of the same elements, but more like groovy. And in my opinion, tropical house sometimes stays a little bit too. Uh, how do you say it? Like, yeah, how the Dutch people were listening to it, just to listen to it and not to dance to it that much as like more groovy stuff, um, more hard stuff. Sure, because you know. It's funny when you mentioned about Germany. I know that part of Holland actually speaks German. Yeah. 
that I know. So it lends itself to have some of the German music and fashion and all that to that part. And when you were saying that, I'm sitting there going, I know this because I've heard this before from other people that lived in Holland, but they were influenced by German techno and yeah, that music. The, it's like the, the 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 techno from Dan had like this overlap between like the house, deep house, and techno. I was really into that as as a person, so it had a lot of influence in my music and in my DJ sets too, and still and still. So in the beginning, you're physically DJing. Did you start with the vinyl culture or you were already digital? <laughs> no, it was very, very digital because um, till my, I think, yeah, till my, my very first uh, gig as D. Hoffner because uh, D. Hoffner uh, was started when I was producing this new uh, kind of music. And I never hit like a vinyl or uh, the Pioneer sets before. Okay. And, not on like uh, pub gigs or school gigs or nothing. Uh, and because I was going to this, those festivals and not studying and go to the pub a lot, I didn't have like any money at the moment I had to do, do my first gigs. So my friends bought a Tractor S4. Tractor S4, I don't know if you know it. It's like this console that you have to connect to your computer. Yeah, yeah. And I had, I think, like one of my best friends uh, did my bookings at that moment and is still my manager till these days. And uh, he said to me, like, let's, let's put it like this. I, I had a lot of uh, requests on my SoundCloud if I want to DJ on that uh, party. But I always said, like, no, I'm just a producer. I'm not a DJ. And after, like, 10, 12 uh, emails... We were drinking a beer and he said, like, just uh, uh, forward one of those emails to me and I will uh, reply to it. And maybe maybe we can we can fix something. Right. And then like after three days, he said, like, OK, in one month, you're playing a headliner show in Belgium for more like more than 500 euros, I think, for one and a half hour. I was like, OK, OK. But I couldn't DJ. And I didn't have the stuff to to learn it, so my friends had to buy this gear for me. You have some practice. nice friends, bro. You got yeah, them. man. I, yeah, I'm I'm the, very thankful. Yeah, Mr. Jay has got some really cool boy friends yeah, around yeah. him because my friends have been like, "What are you out of your mind? I'm buying you." <laughs> <laughs> but they uh, they went to a lot of shows with me and. Uh, I think well, that comes story, with the, that the, comes the, the stories superstar. we built together uh, are worth it. Yeah, but that I'm, comes I'm, with becoming a superstar because they, there's some benefits to hanging out with the superstar DJ. <laughs> okay, so you get the first gig, and you have to learn basically how to play music, and you get normal yeah. music off the digital side from the computer and everything, of course. When does it take off for you? Like from this point, from where you start. So what's the first record that you make that everything goes blah, like you know? Um, I think there are a few moments when my career really started, like kicked off. Um, yeah. One of those was like like my very first one that I put on on I put out on SoundCloud. It was called Sonnestal. Already you mentioned it. Yeah. And that's because um. When you uh, have, a, have a song on SoundCloud, sometimes on the right, there's like this recommended session, uh, section. Yeah. And you had like Baker Matt at that time that was very popular here in, in Holland and also popular in France. And every time his record was playing, my record was next. It was because people were searching on it, but also because there wasn't that much else like right. in this genre. There's not a lot of that, and there's not a lot coming into that genre yet. It's still, oh, the, the, yeah. So, I was like, when you are one of the first ones, it's like this perfect combination between lucky and um, I was producing the great stuff, but you have to be lucky, uh, in, in music because otherwise, like, you can produce the best music that you ever made, but when people don't find it, it's nothing, it's like it's nothing. 
But did you have to do anything as far as any kind of, I don't want to say it like this, but I'm going to uh, put it out there. Don't yes, be insulted. Yeah. Don't be insulted. But let me, I just, let me put I, I it love, out there. I think that the direction is clear. Yeah. People think, and I've seen this from other uh, numbers, like you'll go to someone's site, a SoundCloud site, let's just say, for example. You'll look at their followers and they have a million plays, no comments. A lot of people are be buying fake buys. Did you have to do any of that in the beginning of your career? No. And and um, I'm saying the music is bad that they're doing. And that's that very, doing. in my opinion, it's very strange because I had a profile maybe of like hundred followers, and they weren't that active. And what just using at that time you can use like the right tags to be found. Nowadays, like SoundCloud is one hell of a jungle. At that time, it was just the beginning of SoundCloud, right? And you and I built my career on SoundCloud, and I must say, um, also because of the, I, I think it was already in the beginning, this uh, the gates when you want to download my track because it was all free download. Yeah, you want to download my track, mm -hmm. you had to follow my SoundCloud. Man, my Facebook and my Instagram. And wow. I'm not sure Instagram was already there, but um, yeah. So in 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 like one or in one year, I had like fifty thousand followers on on Facebook without any doing any gigs, only because people were downloading the the, the music. Wow, that's that's awesome. You know, again, to even get five thousand now is tough. You already it had, is. It, you had fifty thousand back then, because you you know because you go on some of these guys, these younger you know younger producers, and you look at the look at their numbers, and you go, "Well, how do they have nine hundred thousand followers?" And sometimes, like in in the past, I thought like this is never possible. It's like it's all it's all fake. Or, but I I I saw it recently on um uh we have um. Me and my my friend who started all of this, like my my old booker and my manager at the moment, yeah. we have our own management uh, office here, and one uh, of our artists is getting like big on on TikTok right now, and also like Instagram, and he's he's like growing that fast that I was like it's it's, it's never real, but it is real. It is possible when. Uh, people are getting like more uh, like uh, commercial or um, ready to be found. It is possible to grow fast. I had the same thing. Uh, it's happening with one of our artists right now. Um, some people say like it's it's all fake. It it it, it isn't. It is possible. Still, it's still today. Yeah, like like it's still possible today. Yeah, no, I believe that. But you know what? With all the fake buying going on and yeah. all the fake yeah, yeah, yeah. this and fake that, I must say, I must say, um, one of the 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 reasons why, uh, why SoundCloud wasn't that popular, like, um, let's say five years ago, there was like this moment. It was one uh, hell of a jungle, and never one, no one was using it anymore. I think nowadays it's more it's getting popular again, but was because of the. The reposting battles. I don't know if you ever heard of this. What do you mean the reposting battle? Maybe I did. Um, Maybe well, not. I, like, like, let's say, like, I've got a one one hundred k followers. Yeah. And you also you also have one hundred k followers. Right. I, when I post a track, I ask you to repost it, and when you have a track out, I will repost it. Oh, I see. So you guys are sharing your lists. Exactly. And in the beginning, it was. It's, it was great fun because we were helping each other and we were helping sure. the, the genre and the community. But then people were getting smart and building uh, this repost systems that everyone was automatically reposting each other whenever they put something on SoundCloud. Oh, really? So I see what yeah. happened. So, so, so the genre was starting to move quick because his 100,000 hear it, the other guy's 100,000 hear exactly. it. Exactly. And they would share it and share it and share it. So I can see yeah. how it's possible. But you know what? It has to be that way because if you buy the fake buys, 
the algorithms don't allow it to go anywhere. It just stays yeah. flat, like a flat yeah. response, you know? So um, for the artists who were already big on SoundCloud, it was great fun. But for right. the new generation, it was very shitty because they didn't get fined because it was all of the same artist or we're reposting, reposting again. Oh, wow. Do they, okay, so, so people understand, do they find you now for that stuff? Uh, you mean like SoundCloud is, is uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, when I was more releasing like officially, I only put things on, on SoundCloud to be, fi to be fine on SoundCloud and, um, never did like the marketing stuff again on, on soundcloud and uh also didn't do a lot of uh bootlegs anymore because i had to do oh. things officially with the right, labels now right because you're now working in the system you're not outside the system trying to get in the yeah system. exactly and uh if you want my honest opinion uh, i Please. miss i miss the 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 old days that you just that create this little bootleg and went viral in one day and now i have to work with like top liners and stuff and people in the <laughs> studio and contracts and the people are want want a higher percentage and, and then the label doesn't like it and then you're like two years further and nothing happens oh man that's terrible and but it happens it's part it of happens it. yeah so sometimes a little bit jealous of the old hoffner how he w used to work but i i i'm more skilled now and i love the people i work with and m met all those uh, great producers and singer songwriters so sure. um but sometimes i look back at to myself at my like as a bedroom producer really oh really just doing just doing stuff for fun and put it on soundcloud and when it when it um got to place i was happy but when it doesn't it was like oh who gives a shit see that's something that you know it, it's tough because when we were all starting to make music we cared about every part of it now it's kind of become an expendable thing where you know it's more about the gig than the actual music in a sense mm -hmm. where the music used to be the driving force for the artist to gig for the music it's all reversed now it's different yeah. you, you know yeah um it's it's i think it's a, it's a bit little bit the same for for me uh in my opinion when i started um uh djing it was because people liked my music i produced behind my computer so it was my project and maybe the promoter just liked me and the crowd didn't know me right and nowadays and it's 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 uh, logical but sometimes it's hard to see the wrong people at the poster because they're just like uh selling tickets and not there yeah. for music. but i don't want to, to sound like this old dude you know but um in the beginning uh the promoters were were booking more the new stuff and what they liked and yep. not what the crowd liked mm -hmm. and that to me is something where you have to pick you have to believe in yourself as an artist yeah and say be strong. right you have to be a, a forward person like that foot has to come forward and say you're gonna like what i'm giving you yeah and not be always afraid that oh i'm gonna lose what i created because that's not what music is music is a heart thing it's a creativity thing it's, it's something that just happens it's, it's true, not always but true. The, the, the 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 bills has to be paid so sometimes you have to find this compromise the wait 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 yeah no. what do you mean for a guy like you who is rich like you are come on man no no you no know, the, 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 the 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 bills has to be paid so sometimes you have to make a decision um that are hard um well there's a way of saying it more so you have to make critical decisions to make something what we call commercially viable meaning that people are gonna yeah. like what you're doing because you could try to do this classical sound in this thing and go does it it's cool for me but does it really work for the mass yeah you know, but as a as a as a producer, uh, we all want to make the sound you feel 
you you that you sure. want to hear and um in the beginning it doesn't matter how many people are listening to it but when you are building a career it really does and that's something that's important that people don't understand that's, yeah that it's a business it's not just a hobby or a love no exactly What yeah. started out as something that maybe I'm going to go into the forensic and maybe I'll do the music on the side became forensics became no music became the business. And then the chance of you seeing the money starting to come in, then the, each piece like a brick to another brick, you know, as you're building the, the foundation, it's getting bigger and stronger. And then the last part of it is how do I maintain staying there yeah exactly and not losing that and and sometimes the, the like producer the hoffner is something else than like the dj the hoffner um let's make an example um when i had like the, the most busy time of my career i was touring a lot i couldn't be like every day in my studio because i was touring and i had uh, like a co-producer in my hometown working on my tracks too But I lost the, the the feeling with my own music because like it was good for my career, but as a, like a person and producer, the Hofner, I was losing my product, product, right, 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 and right. My, my my music. Oh, that's not good. So how no, did you no, find no. yourself? So how did you find that that feeling again? That excitement to say I got to get myself structured grounded and back to square one again what what brought that back for you uh one of the people that uh, uh said it to me at that moment like it wasn't very good with my career but my manager said to me like Jeroen, you have to make more music again because the hofner uh the the, the hofner sound we we, we miss the hofner sound and we and i can see it in you that you're not um happy anymore with how your career is going right now. But but isn't the money enough to make you happy? No. Wow. Uh, when when it's when when it was all uh, about the, the money for me, um I think my life was uh, like way different from that. Oh I, really? Yeah, be, like um there was like um to bring it back to the the, the, the tropical house uh, music. Uh, there was this big tropical house vibe and mm -hmm. hype um but then the sound became commercial like very commercial oh really okay and also you could hear it in tracks from like justin bieber i think and it was like more towards the like the pop music like the elements of the the, the tropical house yeah you were and hearing was... you were hearing that in the radio records yes in the very exactly. commercial. right and then um when i was uh getting booked for like festivals and stuff i was still playing like house music like tropical house with house music so, and what, happens, music. so what happens when you play it at a big festival like that style do people stay with you dancing or they stop dancing or are they expecting are they expecting that tropical house sound only from you no this that, that that's the thing like um in the beginning when it was like this hype and more underground thing becoming more popular people were dancing on the tropical house in in my opinion huh? uh, in my um and then when it became more commercialized okay um people were expecting like it to be mixed with more dance or edm sound not like very <laughs> hard edm but more like the the, the pop uh, edm But that wasn't what I liked as a DJ and a what do you like as a DJ as a the, the house music like uh, everything in the Axwell, house spectrum. You mean Axwell, all that stuff, that house music? Uh, uh, let's banging? let's let's say more. Uh, I had like my problem is after two years, I'm getting bored, and then I'm into something else. So, um, like deep house, I really like like 
Ah, so you uh, like house Deep House. Music. Ah. Yeah, yeah, I like Deep House. Not like the, that EDM house ish. So I, I love like the old actual, but not like the. Yeah, the, ha- the stuff that w- in my world. Yeah. In my world, our house, soulful yeah. house, Afro yeah. house. Yeah. Disco house, all that exactly. musical house. Yeah. Oh, see, I didn't know. See, they don't know. People don't know that about you. They think it's only one track. Only one track you stay no, on. No, yes, no, that's that's not the thing. So oh, I like uh and nice. all, everything that goes more to like the, the, the techno side, I also like, but the old techno, not like the 150 BPM techno from now. <laughs> the train, the train. I find techno today when we were when techno was out first time around, it sounded to me like deep house. Yeah. Techno now today. Yeah. When I listen to techno, for when you say techno to me from back in the day, it's like it's like real fast, banging hard. I'm like, what happened to techno? Where did techno? That's not techno, that's deep house. But I understand we have changes and everything is so it changes. Oh, yeah, it's... and it changes so fast these days. Dude, it drives us all what is, crazy. What is your opinion about uh I'm not sure if this, the same thing is happening in the USA, but about the BPMs going faster and faster? I don't know, but I sort of we've all been wondering about this too, because I'm seeing people saying one the 140 bpm is the new 110 i'm like yeah i'm like this is crazy why is it going so fast do you hate it or do you love it the question really depends is this it's not that i hate it because somebody just took one of my old classics and sampled it and he sped it up that's not a problem with me the question i have is what's the drugs that they're taking to keep up with <laughs> because there yeah. must be some sort of speed that they're taking a drug that makes the brain react that they want it faster and no. faster i i think it's uh TikTok, maybe i'm man. wrong maybe i'm wrong it's it's, it's tick tock it's the fast consuming of everything so you're telling me the 10 second videos everything the f- constant changes the flashing mm-hmm. like this everything is speed 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 how long uh, did a track la- uh, uh the play when uh, when you were young like it was like tracks of like seven minutes well we're, eight okay minutes? So, so let's talk about radio radio would be normally three and a half minutes three and a no, half yeah three and a half that's normal radio record when nowadays you to, not, okay and then when oh, we sorry were, yeah when we were kids going out to a nightclub a dj would play from the beginning to the end could be anywhere between minimum four minutes to ten minutes the same record or DJs I, I knew, like Larry Levan or any of those, would play a record for 30 to 40 minutes, back and forth, same record. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's and we loved it. Loved it. Now, now, there was a thing that happened in Vegas. DJs like Scissor Hands that were doing quick snips. Yeah. Next record, mm-hmm. 10 seconds, this record, that record. And that became a genre, like speed. People like the yeah. changes. So I guess guys like myself and fans of the original house music were a little bit like, what is that? Because you're playing 10 seconds. Of, wait, wait. Uh, it's coming to the chorus part. What do you, boom, next record. Next I, I've got the same. It's, it's, right? Like, when I started like 10 years ago, I was playing a record like four or five minutes. And, I, and it wasn't that there were like drops in it. Maybe like a drop, but not that they build up, bam bam. But now, I when I wait to the like second drop, people are off, are bored. So I want to play the full record, but the, the the crowd doesn't always want me to do it. They want the next record already. Yeah, but also because I'm on the same lineup as the DJs are that are playing uh, fast. Fast, yeah. So like what tempo? 10, 20 seconds drop, break down. Okay. And I'm more like telling a story. Let the beat play. Let have the room to, um, yeah. Let space for dancing and not just build up, drop, build up, drop. I hate that. 
So what BPM when you with you, these guys are you normally picking up from what like the other guy? What's he leading uh, uh, you? At? I was I wasn't talking about uh, the BPM. I was talking about um, uh, the how fast they mix. Like well, then that, okay, no, 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 one record to the no. One, we know that we know we know they're doing quick changes, like quick yeah. mixes. Yeah. But yeah. how fast are they playing the records? Would you say what tempo? Um. I have to be honest. I'm one of the guys who are playing the records fast at the moment. That's okay. So, what are you playing them at? So, um, when I when I started like 10 years ago, I started my set at 115 or 18 BPM. That's slow. And I, me, that's slow. Go ahead, keep going. Yes, that, yeah, that, that, but that was like the tropical house genre. Vibe. Yeah, genre. And there were uh, not that many tracks, and and so you had to pick. The tracks you liked from the selection that wasn't that many so right, sometimes right. you like the tracks that were slow in bpm and they sounded not very good when you sped it up so i started maybe sometimes at 115 or 118 and never went higher than i think 125 or 126. okay that's cool. always built i always build it up so i started slow and went more hard and fast at the end but after uh, COVID, COVID-19, um, people were crazy to party here in, in, in Holland and Europe. Really? So when I, I started on 125 and I quit it on, finished on 128, 129. And last year, I since like one year, I started 128 and sometimes I, I finish at 140. And it's very crazy because it's it's yeah uh, it's from the, like a creative side it's it's a cool thing because you can do more stuff and you can put more records in different genres in one set because i always like build it up right I'm never going back or the quick changes between like an urban track or house it's always like house or techno mm -hmm. but when you, especially when you're playing like two hours you can build that tell the story and get people like in your train and that's what i find very cool these days and when i look at all the djs on the lineup they're doing kind of the same but not um maybe they stay at 128 130. so are you also are you also seeing djs playing with the pre-mix sets too at these festivals in other words they're sets are already pre-made are you you're still doing it live right you're still playing live and i, I always did it live I never ah i didn't I, say one that. one time i i yeah yeah, yeah. i want yeah so it's just a funny story i one time i had a gig in i think it was germany and every time i was um mixing between the, the, the decks there were was like a uh, technical issue that it's like this crackling sound and people were looking at me like, how we can fix this? And I was like, no, I, I don't know. I don't know. And then I was like, yeah, I have this like mixtape on my my USB. I never told this anywhere. I, I, I have this mixtape on my USB. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> right here at first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And um, shh, shh. I put it on this 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 mixtape and faked for like one hour, I think. Did you do this? You but, turn the mix come. You were like, put your hand yeah. up. Down. And then that, and then the people really liked it, and it was very strange because the people were getting on the stage behind me. Then they were seeing. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> you can't watch. But that that was was just very very funny because uh, it was just a, 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 a mixtape. What was online Ooh. on my SoundCloud, but it was just just fun. Well, but you know, I we never saw, did uh, look, like the reason why. Okay, but, the reason why I ask is this. I know David Guetta. I know he yeah. played on vinyl and I know he knows how to mix and all yeah. that. But there's been situations where YouTube videos came out where the for example, let me show it like this. See my phone, everybody? It's dark. Yeah. Meaning when you see the pioneer and you don't see no lights, yeah. What happens? You're sitting there saying, well, wait a minute, those Pioneers CDJs are not on. Uh huh. But yet every time you hear a mix, yeah, yeah, you yeah, see yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and then the response came from the editorial was, well, we've had to 
time our music to the pyrotechnics and the light show. I don't buy uh, it. That's one of the reasons why I like real house music and real techno music because uh, the DJs are there for the music and not for the show. Thanks. And from like a commercial side, I get it. Like, of yeah. course, well, 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 like well, when you got like this like big hit and you get booked on main stage tomorrow and, and they say to you, we have to do it pre-recorded because the show, blah, blah, blah. Who am I to say, no, I, do, I won't do it. I won't play if it's, if it's not live. Of course you say like, okay, let's, let's go for it. But I'm... Uh, in in my um, circle of people, I never met someone who who did it. Okay, good. Now, so Zonestra becomes pretty big. You start yeah. getting out there. You did your commitments. What's the first big artist that takes you to the top? Like, where's what's that record that you know with with a song that you really go, wow, this is this is huge now. This is big. Ah, yeah, there were like um, or a series of records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were were like this um, YouTube blog, music blogs. They had a music uh, YouTube channel, but also like uh, an internet blog, and they were writing about music and stuff. And there was this channel called Mister Suicide Cheap Sheep. Okay, it was it was very very big at that moment, uh -huh. and in that time, people were really talking about the music also when they're not into producing music it was um finding new music in this specific genre and stuff and it was posted on this uh this channel on youtube and okay. it was refreshing the the tab on 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 my computer and it went from like ten thousand listeners to twenty thousand 30,000, 100,000 to like a millions in like s such a short time of, of time. And then I thought like, wow, this is, this is going huge. And uh, it was called, I think, Vogel Flucht, the, the, the record. And after that, I did a bootleg of John Legend, uh, John Legend, with all of me. Um. Someone told me, like, you have to listen to this record. Maybe you can make a, a bootleg out of it. And I made this little bootleg on Fruity Loops at that time. Used a saxophone in the build-up. And something magical happened to, to, to the record. Um, it, it's, it has been deleted and re-uploaded on YouTube by several uh, channels because I didn't have the rights but Declared. at one at, at one point it like had like 100 million uh plays on on uh youtube and it was supported by uh chesto and other big djs at their radio uh shows so i think that's one of the records that went like very uh big uh, on the bootleg side and then i did my first uh, official release on spinning with Sam Feld, and yeah, it's also like one of the founders of uh, the tropical house genre. And that's when, uh, you know, your life changes at that point. Yeah. Everybody yeah. has that life changing moments, like lightning hit you. And it had oh. all happened in like three How months. many months? Two months? Three to two months. Two like, to three months. So how long yeah. did you work? to get to that, what we call that overnight moment. How long are you working to that moment where everything goes boom from the it's beginning? Hard, it's hard to say because I already told, like I started when I was 14, just. Right, so 14, months. okay. All, all those little moments that I was just playing around behind my computer, figuring out how to play the notes on the keyboard and how to mix and download the right samples and uh, how to rip a vocal out of a tune and stuff like this. I think I was 21 when this moment happened. Seven yeah. years, about seven, seven to eight years. years, seven to yeah. eight, almost seven and a half years. 
Because but I didn't knew I was working all the time, uh, all that time. I just, I, I thought I was just doing that for fun. Right. So I never had this big dream about being a producer or a DJ. It's crazy, no, right? And that's the that's the greatest part of this whole thing. You didn't have the dream. No, I didn't you have didn't the dream. Have dream. You're just doing it. I had the dream when I was doing it like the first year. I was like, wow. I finally found what I want to do in my life. And I'm quite good at it. And I want to do this for the rest of my life. Like, um, I know I can be a DJ for the rest of my life. When I'm like 70, I'm not behind the decks. But I can produce till I die. I can work in the music industry to whatever, whenever I want. So I really like uh, the whole industry behind it. Uh, all, it's like it's a very it's a very difficult in, industry to work in, but a very sure. interesting world to work in because you uh, you work with like very creative people, but also like the business side of it. So and normally that's like clashing. And you have to find the right way to be creative and uh, work with all those business guys. Yeah, right. It's a balance. It's a balance it's of a being balance, a yeah. businessman and being a create a creator. Yeah. And and this is a problem with the art world. Some people are great at being creators and very bad at business. Yeah. Not understanding deadlines and getting things done because they're just playing the super cool i want to be you know just do what i do let me just make the music forget about the business and in this game today you gotta have both you have to and do them well because you got to be able to talk to record labels you have to be able to talk to your management you have to be able to talk to the people that work with you too and keep us you know get records done, keep a system going because this thing is changing all the time. Super fast. It moves like speed of light like that. Everything's yeah. And, 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 and the shitty part about <laughs> it is that like most, most creative people aren't good in business because I think there's something different in the brain. <laughs> right. The Why creative. there's like most creative people are not accountants or no. doctors or lawyers. They're there's a reason, more, right? There's a reason they're more, we find them to be more avant-garde, super uh -huh. cool. They don't follow the rules of everyday life. They have their own rules, which makes them- Yeah, cool. but, but then you have like this whole new um, kind of artist, I, I think, because uh, especially in the, in the electronic music, uh, because in the past DJs want to be like like seen, but a lot of producers are DJs right now, and especially I think in the Tropical House, all almost all, all the guys who were making the Tropical House genre in the beginning were like introvert per people, mm. and weren't like show show guys. No. They're, just want to make music behind like a the computer, like a scientist working on the, you know, in the Ex lab, right? Exactly. And then we all uh, went to the stages, and everyone thought we want to be a DJ, but no, we just want to make music. But when I found out playing records was cool and getting the crowd crazy, yeah, I loved it. But in the beginning, when I had my first gig, I remember I uh, one like or five minutes before the show, I said like. This, is, this isn't for me. I want to go back home. I was so nervous. Oh, tell us about it. What happened? Um, so my friends bought the, the, the gear for me. The I practiced, uh, I practiced a lot. Uh, I already knew what, what was, what I was going to play that night. It wasn't pre-recorded. So it will, I was very nervous. Um, and I can, I remember I was in the car. Uh, my parents were with me that that day. I was wow. uh, sitting in the car with my parents, and we were driving up uh, to to Belgium. And we arrived at the festival, and they said to me like, 
uh, yeah, your your booker told us this is your first gig here in Belgium. And I was like, here in Belgium. I was, I was, I was thinking it's my first gig ever but i was playing like yeah yeah it's a very very cool to be yeah, here blah, blah, blah. yeah. <laughs> and then i was so nervous and then i said to my mate uh that was my, my booker and my manager right now like this is more for you i'm not gonna do this and he said like yeah but it's already paid you have to and i was like oh shit i have to do this right now and a lot of my friends were there to support me and after I think three, four uh, records, I was like feeling it and getting loose. And I was like, the people uh, were, were dancing and yelling. And I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. So a lot, a lot of can change in, in 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 a few minutes. But the but the anticipation of getting there, the stress, the nervousness. You're oh like, wow! I want to go home. I want to go home. Yeah, yeah. And I, I had that well, for for a little while. Avicii. Avicii, yeah. if you watch Avicii, they, he spoke about that. He said, I hated doing it. He would rather have been doing what you said, be in the studio all day and night. But one wreck after another, he, the shows was what really did it to him. They killed him. Yeah. And not only uh, producers and DJs had his, has his problems, also like the singers and, and other artists, they really like to create stuff, but and they are performing because they need the money. That's important though. Well, because you need money to do what? To survive. And to create. And to cre and to keep doing this thing. Otherwise, yeah. if you have no money coming in, you can't stay in the game. Exactly. But to, to be to be sure, I I like to 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 DJ. But the first year it was stressful because I wasn't that uh skilled. So I was also nervous because I knew well, you have to I wasn't really that skilled. Dovna, you have to understand everybody when they first start out is in that same position. You're not going to be a superhero. I know, training. but but the without difference training, without training, you know what I'm saying? But the difference was um, all of my colleagues were like DJing since they were like 14 or 16. So they yeah, because you came in late. You came. I in came late. in very late and my first gig was at a festival. And I never touched the decks. Before. Now, your so friends. Well, here's a question then: the friends that you took with your colleagues that yeah. were they playing festivals or they're just small party DJs? Small and, parties. Yeah. So you coming in like a level list guy, a lister mm -hmm. guy. It's a different world, dude. It was different. very strange to to start as uh yeah, you say a lister like a festival DJ. You started at the top. You I started work, that stuff. Yeah, like this. This. it's you crazy. Know, you play at the and it's bar, all, and it's all because tropical play the, house. Play at the hashish place. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you know, no, no, no. With mom and dad are driving you to Belgium to play a festival. Exactly. That's big, dude. That's something to laugh at. There's nothing to laugh at. It is because it is because it's. It's a story that you don't hear a lot. Okay, Dehafta, here's something I wanted to bring out. Yeah. A lot of the EDM guys, producer DJs, are not making their own records. They're getting people to ghost. Yeah. Are you doing everything from scratch yourself, everything in the studio, or do you have a team of people now that you're working with today that you start making records with? It depends on the record because um, sometimes uh, I got like a top liner. That's someone sent me over collaboration. A, yep, a, a demo of a track, but that track is also I like made in a studio. So maybe I like some elements of the instrumental that they used. So sometimes I use their like chords or their. Uh, a little clap or a transition sound but most of the time i do everything from scratch and i'm on the other side of the table i'm co-producing for uh, other artists too so is that me mixing in the whole thing to finish product where you hand in the wave file mp3 everything no no um 
I'm not that skilled in like mixing and mastering. I'm more a creator. Okay. So um, it depends on on the on the track. Sometimes I think my my mix sounds perfect and I only need to be mastered. And th- sometimes I'm like, nah, I think it can be like twenty percent better when like an uh, engineer who studied for only like mixing and mastering uh, brings it to the next level. Do you think it's healthy to work with other people or do you think it's good to stay but just on your own? Um, no, it's always it's always good to, to, in my opinion, it's always good to work with other people. And also because sometimes I like stuck here in my studio and it's good to ha- invite other producers or uh, songwriters or singers or uh, visit another studio too. Not only to collab, but just to make uh, music, and will, and then afterwards you will see if it's for you or someone else. Gotcha. Um, I want to bring this up because I know you work with an awesome American artist. Um, okay, a friend of ours that came out of New York, Kathy Brown. Kathy Brown. Yes, and you did a great, a really good record. Not in her style, though. It's not her style. It's your style, which is super cool. You would think the, it's my style? Well, I think it's more towards your your style. Yeah, it lends because the, 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 well, um, what was the thing? People were saying like it's not tropical house. In my it, opinion, it, it's more but it's not tropical. mix between house and tropical house. Or right, it's a hi- what I call. Let's use the word hybrid. Hybrid. Okay. Cool. Meaning, yeah. we, meaning. 50% lends itself that way, but yet it's still 50% the other way. Uh-huh. You know, it's it's not like a soulful American house record or Afro house no. record. So let's no. just so let's let's clear that up. Yeah. So okay. So I just want to tell everybody, um, those that have been following the show know that Kathy Brown recently just went through a health major issue, and we're sending her prayers. She was diagnosed with stage four lung and brain cancer. And I know I don't want to do this, but I have to do this. Guys, if you can help Kathy Brown out, go to the GoFundMe page. Defected in many of the companies uh, are, are, offer, are giving her loads of money. She needs all the help she can. And De Hoffman worked with her. I worked with her. We, she's a doll. We love her. And we wish her the best. And he, I had told him today off camera when the show started that Kathy Brown is battling for her life. I, I, like whenever any of us dealt with cancer, and I'm, I'm a cancer, I'm a husband of my wife from a cancer survivor. It's a tough, tough battle. So, to say the least, tell us about the Kathy Brown story. Because I had to bring her up. How did that all come together for you? Um, I have to think about it, but I think, let me check how this record came alive. I think, um, my manager, uh, get in contact with her or her manager or publisher. That would be Shannon or, or Bucks. I publisher. think so. Yeah. yeah. And they <laughs> sent over this, uh, this top line, but it was a little bit too soul for my, uh, for your genre, oh, for how you not my it. taste, but for the yeah. genre and for the the what people expect from me, what I produce and what the labels want from me. So, and but I want to give it a shot because, yeah, what? Why I'm not? Like, right? Why not? What and why voice? not? I, and y- y- you must know, like a lot of uh, top lines I I get, I work with it, and it doesn't work, and you go on to the next one, and this one got stuck in my head, and. I was really fun to to uh, produce, and I remember I was producing the track, and another producer was rocking around the studios here, and he came in, and he was a very good uh, piano player, and he did some very cool uh, chords on it, and I used that one uh, that on the on the record, and I wanted to do more a little bit more like a housey vibe. Yeah. But in your opinion, it's hybrid. Um, uh, yeah, like it, it, for me, sometimes it's hard to say when it's something like 
I think it's more easy for you to hear it's produced by me as the Hoffner. Well, you know, it comes back to that same thing we said a little while ago. How far do we make it so it's commercially viable for the genre? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you yeah. can take it really far and it's like it loses the concept of the, the style of you and the sound of what people are used to hearing. Yeah. So you have to kind of find that, what we call it, that 50% mark. It's like, up, oh, no more. That's it right there. Yeah, yeah. And I was uh, was doing quite a lot of shows for Happy Feelings. It's like a concept uh, party here in, in Holland. And they were. Uh, uh, it's all about like house with a happy vibe on it. And it, and, and they had uh, just created a new label. And I thought like, ah, this will fit that label. And let's go for it. Yeah, let's give let's it a roll. Make, right? Let's make music that I like. Oh, and that's how it came together. And the record did really well. And good on both of you. Congratulations on that. Moving forward now, I'm going to bring to today, because I'm glad he he shared that with us, that moment. And we wish Kathy Brown the best, of course. Um, you're working on a new concept album. Yeah. Let's let's hear what's where are we going down now? Are we staying in the tropical house vibe or we're we going away from it? Where are you at in your life now as a musician musically? Uh, as I already told you, I'm uh in my uh, especially in my my shows, I'm at the higher level of the BPMs when you can call it still like house music. 125. And I'm <laughs> no no 130. <gasps> Everyone breathe. 130 and I uh, um, I'm flirting a lot with like hard house. Okay. And not, I th I think there's a, a lot of um, how do you say like different subgenres in hard house, but I don't know if you know like club hats. No, I don't know club hats. No. You have to to. I'll find out now. Now that I know about yeah, it. Yeah, that's a, we'll it's a very typical uh typical sound. There's a Dutch uh DJ and producer duo from back in the day, and they had this uh, specific sound, uh, that like the club hat sound, and it was like I think from the late '90s and early 2000s. Uh, it has the like the dunk in it. And it's like the dunk thing there in in USA or not? What do you it's mean? Like a dunk, a dunk is uh, an offbeat bass. No, I don't uh, know. No. Like what what, what uh, Calvin Harris did with um, his new tracks. Okay. The the like the the the, the bass on the halftime. Okay, so it slows down. No, it's, it's like yeah, like. <laughs> It sounds a little bit stupid. Yeah, it's on the upbeat. Upbeat, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. it's on the upbeat. Because that's and, what threw me off when you said on the offbeat. I'm like, no, so it's on yeah, the yeah. end two, end three, end four. It says on the end. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then the, the, the bass sound uh, sounds a little bit as, as it's, if you uh, slap on something with like um, a tube. Gotcha. A very specific. Oh, no, that's a Dutch German thing. That's not that that we don't do with the Americans or the English. I never heard the English do that, but it's the Dutch I know doing that. Uh, the English d also did it, and okay. it was uh, a a club in. I'm not sure. I think uh, Liverpool uh, called like Wigan Pier. Oh, okay, I think, and the, that genre was very popular at at that club and. Um, but it was like from back in the day, and I, I I'm uh, sometimes playing that kind of music because it's music from when I was young, and I really feel it. And so I'm producing that kind of uh, stuff. Just now it's just for fun, but maybe I want to. You never know. You may give it to the and it goes wow. <laughs> and and for the rest, I'm 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 producing like. Uh, let's say a house with tropical house influences but on 130 beat, beats per minute jesus yeah wow. and i want to bring back the saxophone here and there so um yeah more i think sax, that's more sax <laughs> more, 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 man more sax now i was a little actually, bit bored do yeah. you have a real sax player coming in or are you playing it on the keyboard the sax parts um, uh, when I started, it was just a sample packs, man. 
Oh, well, now sam sample CDs, yeah. And the funny part was you had to be quick when every time there was like this new sample CD out there, you had to be like the first one with the best samples because one week later you're on SoundCloud or YouTube and you're people hearing... have the same the same exactly. Stuff. But when you you're the first one and never was. And no one's uh will use that part of the the sample pack but later on uh i was lucky to uh perform and record with like one of the best uh, saxophone players here in holland so everybody has a start you start with sample packs you start and then yeah. you, you and you grow that's you know that's it's, it's, it's hard to say like uh grow because like one of the biggest hits was just like this sample from a sample pack. I chopped it up. I made my own version of it. Well, we, we, but, we're gonna say we, we're gonna say you've had success, but you've also said you know what? I don't want to just take things from samples. I want to get no. Food. I want to more be more creative and see what really, I'm saying. You want yeah, the creativity yeah, yeah. part. It's not like exactly. it's not an insult. It's I'm no, no. I, I growing I, meaning. Ah, this is th that was then. I want more now. I, I yeah, in that position, you can do it. But I think the things like um, like splice, is is a big thing in USA, right? Also, right for producers, mm -hmm. it's a very it's it's a good thing because uh, people can produce fast, and people are introduced to producing uh, on the younger age than maybe uh when i was young but people has to use it on the right in the right way and um don't want to produce too fast and take some time but when the competition is high people want to produce very fast and then the quality goes uh down any dreams or aspirations coming to the ocean across to do electric daisy land all that stuff like you know edc and and uh what's the other one in the desert in la um in in uh, california burning man burning man you want to do any of that stuff is that is that part of your on your bucket list as a as a dj producer or you like it's, staying in europe it's, it's not of course i want to go there um but it's always hard for me to um, to dream, and I don't have like um, how do you say um, I'm not a fan of someone, and I'm, I'm not that easy inspired by by people, and I'm more like my dream is to work in the music industry as long as I live. And I'm 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 happy to do the gigs in Europe, but and and the rest of the world. And I really want to go to USA, but I can die happily when I don't do gigs in the USA. <laughs> and it's not it's it's not that I that I that I uh, I'm not yes. ambitious. Yeah, yeah. But it's more I am just happy how my life is at the moment. You you married? Have children? Or you? No, still not yet. Not yet. But I'm with uh, my girlfriend, and uh, we're planning to have kids. Yeah. Is it hard for you being in the circuit to keep the good relationship and the business separate? Um, you know, no. what I mean? meaning, yeah, there's, yeah. There's the drinking. There's the you know the 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 women around. You know, there's a lot of things going on in these in these in these big festival gigs and everything. Yeah, I've been there, done that. <laughs> that's the and that's you have the t-shirt right you have the t-shirt that says I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no um yeah of course i know what you mean but um when you're you getting know, older it's not that hard to uh keep it separate recommendations for young producers can you help us to, can you tell what a young producer should not do oh wow um not do or don't ah okay uh, or do or do, do right no, away like let's say like let's do make the music that you want to make and and it's and it's 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 um it's very easy to say that because it worked for me 
But I think the chances of you going like very big is bigger if you produce a, like a new kind of thing that people in the beginning think like, what is this genre or what is this kind of house than just copying the rest of the people and that you can be found because everyone is making the same shit and it's not special anymore. So you, I think there's more chance to grow big when you just do the thing. Uh, don't be like, I want to be unique. Just make what you think is right, what you feel, because you have to feel the music. And someone else said that as well in the show. And because I asked the question about the classic names, Tiesto, let's say, or yeah. any of the names, Armin Van Buren, Louis Vega, you know, could go through any name, Carl Cox, whatever. Yeah. And what they had said was, don't copy them, be you. Yeah, but for you to like, stand out. The, the thing is, like, Tiesto is copying everyone, David Guetta is copying everyone, because they already had their moments. They just are staying alive by being this commercial project. And it's cool. But when you're going to copy, Tiesto, you're going to copy the rest of the world because everyone is making the same shit. <laughs> it's a good yeah, way, right? Everybody's, everybody's making the same old shit. So if you make new shit, it better be standing out and don't yeah. go too far over the line because otherwise your stuff will be shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Children, remember, eat good, and go to the bathroom, but don't make bullshit. <laughs> oh, man, that was great. And we want to say to you, you know, keep doing what you're doing. It's working. Don't ever stop because there's no reason to stop until, until they tell you not to do it anymore. And take the risks and push the envelope. You must keep yeah. pushing. Otherwise, you know what happens. We get all bored and then it becomes a job. And that's not what we want. We want it to still be something that you say, this is incredible, right? Uh-huh. For sure. For sure. When's your next gigs? Uh, I'm going on a, on a holiday. I'm going to Thailand for one month. So oh, uh, Awesome. Let's chill a little bit. I had a very cool schedule this uh, uh, summer. So, uh, are you playing to... out there? Are you playing out in Samui and Phuket, or are you just going no, out? No, I ju I said I want to uh, it, like this. Yeah, it. lay on a stretcher on the beach, drink, with, tea, eat. with a nice drink. Exactly. Well, my friend the Hoffner, I can't thank you enough for coming on True House Stories and sharing your success with us. Thank you for you know, letting me being part of the show. Oh, yeah. You're part of our, our gang now. We can't thank you enough. You're amazing, bro. The king of tropical house music and one of the creators, Mr. De Hoffner, right from Holland, giving us some stories and helping us share what made him famous and popular. Congratulations, my brother. May you have another 100 years of tropical house success. And wherever you take this genre to, we'll be following you. Thank you, bro. All right, everyone. Next week, we'll see the Burrell Brothers, New Groove Records, how it all started, house music in the early, early 90s, late 80s. They're going to be right here. I got them. Can you believe it? Because everybody always says, man, Lenny, you know everybody. Well, now that I met the Hoffner really well, I do know everyone now. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you again. For True House Stories, see you all next week right here. Same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs>